Minister of Communications and the Digital Economy, Sapan Tami, has said he is against attempts by the federal government to introduce a 5% excise duty on telecommunication services. According to him, the move would impact the sector and Nigerians negatively. He disclosed this while speaking in Lagos at uh, the maiden edition of the Nigerian Telecommunications Indigenous Content Expo organized by the Nigeria Office for Developing the Indigenous Telecom Sector. It's an agency domiciled in the Nigerian Communications Commission. He said this uh, on Monday. He also stated that the telecom sector already contributes a lot to the Nigerian economy and urged the government to consider taxing other sectors of the economy that were not contributing to the national development. Uh, recently, the federal government announced plans to implement a, a 5% excise duty on telecom services at a stakeholders forum uh, in the, on the implementation of excise duty on telecommunications services uh, in Nigeria. Joining us uh, this morning is uh, uh, Chike Ingberdiche, a senior lecturer at the School of Media and Communications at Pan Atlantic University in Lagos. Uh, Ms. Ingberdiche, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning. Good morning, Kofi. Thank right. you for having me. Yes. Do you agree with, because uh, I mean, it's, it's not a usual thing in the world, but I mean, it seems it's becoming more normal now to us in Nigeria uh, of inter-government disagreement and confusion. But uh, the minister has disagreed with the federal government. And uh, do you agree with the, with the reasons he's given um, and why he thinks this is a bad idea? Okay, first, I, I think it's, um, it's healthy in every government for, for persons within that government to have a say in what happens in the administration. So. Um, we don't want a, a situation where everything the federal, federal government says or coming from the executives or whatsoever should just be accepted um, hook, line, and sinker. I think what the minister has said is um, very interesting and um, shows that at least to some extent there are persons within the government that are beginning to think and then to see um, the significant impact of um, their policies and um, that the administration has really, really wrecked on, on the on people of Nigeria. Um, it is um, shocking that um, at a time like this, we would have um, a government um, imposing more tax and more tax on um, the very poor Nigerians. Um, and um, if you think about this critically, you, would, you begin to wonder if um, this government is truly pro-people. I mean, from their actions, from um, the policies and what they think about doing, um, shows that they do not care so much about um, the welfare of the pest of um, the people in Nigeria. So I am in full support um, of the minister's um, position um, to, um, to go against um, the decision of the government to impose tax um, on um, the communication um, of the country, both voice and data, because there will be impact um, all across the economy. I mean, um, PMS has been increased. Um, we know um, how much that has affected people. And now they want to um, impose more tax, even if it's 1% or 2 or even 5 It's going to affect some persons. There are, I mean, let's, let's come to terms and let's say the way it is. There are massive, massive number of persons living in poverty in this country. Imposing more tax, is that going to take them off that poverty ladder or plunge them further down the ladder? It's a question that the government would need to answer. Uh, you talked about, about it being healthy, you know, for, for a, a government official to, to air their views and to speak up and to be independent to say this is what I feel about government policy, which is good. But it seems there's a, a, a serious and worrying confusion in this uh, current administration in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And this is not the first time. You know, we've had conflicting pieces of information being given by one agency or one head of a power state or ministry uh, or department, and then someone from another agency, ministry or, 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 or department comes out to say, no, it's a, it's a different thing, you know. And now, Pantame is saying he wasn't consulted. He wasn't invited to any meeting. And of course, you remember that the, um, the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, who had herself previously said that they were going to give money, you know, to certain category of Nigerians to help the cushion the effects of the COVID and then the economic um, uh, uh, recession on them. And later now did a U-turn when it was realized that that money to be given out was more than 
what the government said it was running short of, you know. Um, so she is now said that they will deduct this tax. Pantami, as Minister of, the Com of Communications and Digital Economy, says he wasn't invited for any meeting, that no memo was sent to him, nothing. He doesn't know. And that his first issue with this is that um, before, like he says, he says before you, uh, you, you make any, any uh, 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 decision, you have to invite stakeholders uh, to make contributions. That's uh, what he says. So what are your thoughts on this? You know, the point is um, this government ha has shown time and again that they do not understand the act of governance. Um, it's very simple. Even if you look at it from a family um, perspective, as small as a family, you cannot take a decision without consulting the people who are critical stakeholders in that particular instance. So it's even mind boggling to find out that um, the minister is making such proposal on behalf of the government without consulting the, the minister directly responsible for the sector they want to impose more tax on. It tells you how, how disorganized, if you, if you may, um, that um, the government have, um, has been right from the top and to the bottom. It's, it's shocking. Um, this is not the first time. This is not the second second time. Um, it just, it, 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 it's it's just appealing, um, appalling, rather. Um, um, in fact, we are not su surprised because um, this is not the first time, as you've mentioned, neither is it the second. Neither, in fact, would it even be the last. We hope it, this would be. But we just know that, you, that a government cannot run without having a synergy amongst themselves. Because I, I can't understand how the executives can um, solve issues. I mean, they've, they've got meetings. If that's a proposal coming on, shouldn't come, on, come out. At least they should have um, run that through with the minister um, responsible for communication and um, um, digital economy. I mean, they, they, they changed the name from, um, to minister um, for communication and digital economy. I mean... Is this the best way to build the economy, I mean, of a digital space, to impose in more tax? So um, I am not surprised. Nigerians aren't sub surprised either. But we expect better from a government that claims that they really want to help um, move the country forward. Um, yeah. Okay. To, to be fair to uh, Ms. Um, uh, Ahmed, Ms. Zainab Ahmed, Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, uh, this this five percent excise duty has been in the finance according to her. This five percent excise duty has been in the Finance Act 2020. If you remember, that was an issue, you know, and of course it was uh, co it received a go good coverage. She says it's been in that Finance Act 2020 since, but it just had not been implemented. And she said the delay on its implementation was as a result of government's engagement with stakeholders, the same stakeholders that uh, Matame is saying were not consulted. But anyway, I hope that they will reply him so we know who is being honest here. So if this has already been uh, in, in, in the law, then I mean, maybe it's uh, a cry too little, too late. What do you say? Yeah, yeah. Um, if truly that, that, that's correct, um, I think the government needs to understand the times. I mean, it's not been long um, we had increase in PMS. We haven't yet recovered from that. We know the price of commodities in the market. And now they want to impose this. There are timings for everything. Even if it's in the, a, it's, it's in the act and that they have the legal right to, to, to roll this out, the time is wrong. The time is absolutely wrong. People are suffering more. Absolutely, yeah. If it did happen in 2020, they couldn't do it in 2020 because of COVID impact. And we haven't yet recovered from it. If we do the simple check to see how, much, how, how many persons are going down the poverty ladder from 2020 to date, the number isn't looking good. So even if um, the minister says, um, yeah, that that's been um, approved long ago, it's in the act, it's just for them to roll it out, this is not the right time. Why didn't they do it before, be, um, I mean, for a long time, kind of ago? So yeah. in every way you, you look at this, 
never a good time at all. Never a good time at all. And I always say, I mean, the, the, the simple point they would say is that they are doing this so they can increase the revenue of the government. But what happens to the jumbo and humongous packages that they receive? Can they cut that down? ASU is still on strike. People are suffering. And our government uh, making more money, enjoying them, themselves, living flashy lifestyle. So if we all must, must cut down, it should go across board. In fact, it should start from them. We know that um, our government is the most ex expensive, you know, in terms of their, their packages. Whether you want to look at it from the ex executive to the um, legislatures, the same thing. So much money is accrued to them, but the people should pay more. I mean, they wouldn't feel a 5% excise duty increase, but the masses would. So if, if she's making that point, the simple point is that this is not the right time because Nigerians are going down the economic ladder. Hmm. All right. And uh, you've already got, got to the next question I was about to ask, which is about the revenue uh, 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 you know, government needs to generate. Uh, we have financial uh, you know, cash crunch in the public sector. Indeed, these are the words of the finance minister as represented at that event where the earlier announced that they're going to back uh, on this uh, move. Uh, she says it's public knowledge that our revenue cannot run our financial obligations. And um, so we are to shift our attention to non-oil revenue. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a case of the devil in deep blue sea. Um, between Nigeria's government shutting down, though we don't have the shutdown we see in the United States, but in terms of not being able to meet its financial obligations and nation grinding to a halt and paying an extra 5% uh, excise duty, which brings the tax obligations or payments by the consumers. Because the telecoms operators are saying they are not going to do anything about this. The uh, consumers will pay. Um, this is because they're already paying uh, uh, 39 multiple taxes in the telecom sector. The operators are already paying 39 multiple taxes. You know, so they're saying that the consumers will ultimately pay this extra 5%, which now will mean that you and I, apart from 7.5% VAT, are paying 5% extra. But, but between the government shutting down or having difficulty in providing infrastructure services, paying you know, uh, salaries and all that, and actually running as a government and us paying this extra 5%, which would you choose? Government grinding to a halt or paying an extra 5% for phone calls and data? I think that that offer shouldn't shouldn't even be on the table, you know, because um, so let's 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 take it simple. The government spends so much to run their affairs, so so much. I mean, you see a governor having aides upon aides, advisors upon advisors, and these people get paid. They've all got so many so many um, things around them, so so many. So. And I, I hope they understand that this um, increase or this um, excise um, um, duty increase, kind of, is going to permeate into virtually all sectors of the economy. Because the hospital, every, uh, every sector that, that uses data would have to make an increase. I mean, even down to the primary and secondary schools and even unis, there will be an increase there. Hospitals... I mean, we, we use, I mean, hospitals use um, 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 equipment, and some of them use, use data. There will be an increase. So however they want to look at it, there will be massive impact on the populace. But they have got to look into themselves, cut down, cut down on the, on the, on the excesses and the wastages. We know how this country operates when it comes to um, corruption and excessive um, kind of uh, um, payment expenses flying left, right, center. If they cut and close those leakages, I don't think we'll be will be will be placed on these uh, on this um, um, on this point of picking between that and the other, because because truly we've got to face it. If they want to increase, I mean. We've, we've had so much now borrowed, and what we have can't even, can't even meet up to what we need to do. It can't even service our debt. It, it, it's very simple. It's very simple. It, it, I don't think, truly, that they really understand the act of taking care of a, um, a nation. 
if you if you truly want to show the people that we are living in dark times, it should start from you. You can't live a fly life. You can't live the way you want to live. Your packages are being paid, and then you come up to tell people we need to in increase taxes here and there. It will finally come back on the people, and everyone would have to pay for it, just the same way we're, we're paying now for um, the new increase in PMS. Mm. And that's it, absolutely. So the minister knows better, but the point is that the government isn't sincere to us. Mm. You know, so um, ensuring that we are in this together. We are not in this together. The government is on a different line, and the people they, um, that are being governed uh, on the other line, the level of poverty, I repeat again, in this country is so much. You drive around, you see for, your, for yourself, and it's, um, it's appalling that they are thinking of increasing um, a 5% stuff on voice and data. Shocking. Interesting. You, you've already also, again, gone on to what I was about to say, which is fantastic, uh, the effect on the economy. You know, phone calls and data, uh, you know, the, the citizens will use as uh, customers, consumers of mobile tele telecommunications in Nigeria will have to pay more. Um, you've said it will affect the, the, the economy negatively. Um, you know, some, someone, I think the minister talked about broadband penetration and the cost of, you know, data and, you know, the, the help or the effect, the positive effect of this data penetration on Nigeria's economy. Um, this data penetration and availability and, you know, the cost of data now going up, you know, you think it will affect the economy negatively? In what ways do you think it will affect the economy negatively? Let's look at data exclusively. And after that, you tell us um, how you think Nigerians should react or respond. Um, I think it's clear. Um, we use data in everything we're doing. In fact, um, our conversation right now, it's, 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 um, it's made possible um, due to um, data. And that's it. Um, in schools, they use data. I mean, primary schools even, secondary schools, unis, hospitals, name it, the bank. Very soon, we'll begin to get an um, increase right now in service, service charges, hopefully, I know, right? Because the bank will want to um, make, make profits. So for every money they invest in things to, just to provide services for you, the end users would have to pay for them. So by the time you check, and I mean, almost everyone has a bank account. When they begin to take away 20, 20, 20 naira and they in increase it to 30 naira or 40, 40 naira, who feels the crunch? You know, it's going to affect our economy and the people in this economy directly. Like I said, the government who roll out these policies don't, don't get affected. Do they understand what, what, um, what, what it means to queue up to get fuel? They don't because they get their fuel, some of them even in the government houses. You know, so they wouldn't understand the pain an average person, right, is going through. And I think what we need to do as a people is, is to resist this, even though we know it, it's gone far. But I think, think people should roll their voices out and speak against it. The minister has done so well to, to, to um, um, object it, right, to go against it. I think all we need to do is to put our voice there and, and support that and, and see where that takes us to. Because truly, um, the government isn't there to lead um, people however they like. Certain people feel the crunch, and we are the people who feel the crunch. They don't see, they don't understand um, um, what, is, what, is, what is happening. Do they go to the markets to see the price of commodities there? And for every day you go back to the market, prices in increase. And now voice data increase now, you know what that's going to happen, right? No in fact, very soon, you'd see the new term starts very soon. If this policy um, takes effect, you see an increase, perhaps maybe um, um, a couple of thousands of naira in some primary school tuition, tuition fees, mm. and even second, secondary schools, because they would have to take care of these things. Parents would have to pay for it. And it's going to be in all all sector of the economy, all sector. All absolutely. right, absolutely. All right, we, we we have to go, but um, uh, you've said it all. You've said it all, and indeed, um, seeing a minister of the federal government challenging a policy of the same government and questioning the the uh, the methods of another minister makes you ask: uh, uh, is, is the president really in control of his cabinet? Uh, uh, Dr. Chike Ingbadiche is a senior lecturer. 
uh, School of Media and Communications at the Pan Atlantic University. Uh, thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you, Kofi. Thank you for having me. All right, all right. And that's the size of our package uh, today. We'll watch this space definitely and follow this story right here on The Breakfast. Um, for more, you can follow us on social media on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Plus TV Africa on YouTube, Plus TV Africa, and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Kofi Bertels. Good morning.